Welcome to the live online information session of the Master of International Cooperation Sustainable Emergency Architecture at UIC. My name is Carmen Mendoza. I am the co-director of the program. Uh, welcome. I'm uh, Raquel Colacios. I'm the coordinator of the program and we will be explaining today about the program and afterwards we will have time for questions. Um, our program is based uh, on, in the School of Architecture of the International uh, University of Catalonia. Uh, we are a private university uh, placed in Barcelona city near the Coiserola mountain. Um, it is a small campus but with all the facilities and very well connected to the city centre. Uh, students of the program have access to all the services and installations of the university, such as the model lab or the library, uh, as well as uh, to all the lectures or events that are organized by the School of Architecture. As you see, we are a women team. Uh, well, Carmen and, and I, we already introduced ourselves. Uh, then we have uh, Sandra Bestraten, who is also a co-director of the program, she's an architect. Uh, then Alison Corniff, she's the assistant coordinator, she's an environmental engineer and uh, an alumni of the program as well. And then Ana Cañizares, uh, it's our communications officer, she's in charge of the web, blog, Facebook, uh, Instagram. Uh, and about the program, I guess all of you are wondering what it is that we teach and um, I think it's a very singular program because we're not only talking about, as the title says, emergency architecture, but we're really in a hub of international cooperation and we link everything that is development, urban development, sustainable urban development with emergency, post-disaster and post-conflict. So we're dealing, um, teaching architects or people from the built environment how to work in an interdisciplinary way um, on the topics of post-emergency reconstruction, um, uh, post-conflict now, um, refugee cri the refugee crisis, design of refugee camps, at the same time the urban integration of refugees, especially in Europe, now that this is one of the main areas of interest in the European continent. Uh, so basically reconstruction and relocation, shelter and low technology, because as you see, we are also talking about the urban scale and the architectural scale. Um, we really think, uh, we really delve into sustainable urban development. We think that it's not just emergency and humanitarian aspect of the program, but also development. So at the same time, we're talking of urban upgrading. We're introducing a methodology that tries to delve into social spatial strategies as well as thinking of environmental justice. So in a nutshell, we'll be um, uh, teaching you in an interdisciplinary way. I think this is what makes our program singular for architects and people from the built environment. It's also interscalar, which means we go from the urban scale to the architectural scale. We really believe in solutions that are context-based and at the same time, we can't imagine any kind of reconstruction, regeneration, or uh, any kind of development without social empowerment. So these are our, this is our approach. Um, as I was saying before, our methodology mixes theory and practice. Our professors, as you'll see, are practitioners, but at the same time, they're academics. Um, it's very hands-on. We have workshops that are very hands-on at the same time. Uh, we apply the methodology, we'll be teaching you of social spatial strategies and physical workshops that are taking place in Barcelona. We think it's important that you work here. There's a lot to do in the first world in, in terms of equity, in terms of post-conflict situations. And at the same time as we're an official program, we go on to research. So one of the singularities of our degree is that it is an official program, so you can go on to a doctorate when you completed the, the year program. Okay, and all of this is structured in three main modules. Uh, we dedicate the first part of the course, which is from September to October, uh, for the emergency, post-conflict, post-disaster uh, context, which is module one, emergency, shelter and settlements. Then we dedicate module two to the urban development and community design, uh, which is normally done in November. And then module three, social spatial strategies, uh, goes from December to uh, end of February, more or less. 
Um, for you to know, our weekly schedule is from Monday to Thursday, from 10 in the morning to 5 in the afternoon, and then Fridays are dedicated to the thesis development. And well, after February, we have time for thesis development and uh, internship. We'll explain it a bit uh, later. I think it's important to stand out what our thesis is like. Um, as I was saying before, this is an official program, so um, we are generating theses that are um, based on research, but at the same, they're project-based research. So it is a, res a written research paper, um, but we help you to write it. We have a writing workshop which begins at the beginning of September and ends when you submit your thesis in May. Uh, you have supervisors that are here based in Barcelona. It's a one to three ratio, professor, student. Um, we always have a public jury, which is with a guest jury, um, and uh, are really proud of the kind of research we're generating in this program, which is really linking development and emergency. I think this is one of the things that makes this program really, really relevant today, that we are not just talking about humanitarian aspects, but we're also talking, or, or humanitarian architecture, or social architecture, we're also talking about development and sustainability in the long term, which is very social and physical. Um, since we're giving you a lot of methodologies, a lot of context-based um, workshops and academic um, courses, we also want you to put this in practice. So part of your uh, work will be uh, going on a field trip. The field trip is included in your tuition. It pays the tickets, the airfare, and the lodging. Uh, we always go looking for a project which is based with a community, which is local, a partner local university. This year, for example, we went to Ecuador and we worked in the reconstruction plan of Chamanga, one of the areas most affected by the earthquake last year in Ecuador. We worked with a local university, with the local government, and our plan will be incorporated in the Chamanga plan. At the same time, we did something as constructing in the site and leaving something visible for the community, I think you'll be able to check this out in our blog and in our field trip. Um, so approximately it's 10 days. Um, it's putting in practice what you've learned in the program, which I think is very, very important. And the last uh, part of the course, uh, it's uh, an internship. Uh, all of the, our students have to do a period of a minimum three months internship in uh, an institution or private company or public administration uh, in which um, develop all of what you have been uh, learning in the course. Uh, we encourage as well our students to somehow link the internship with the topic they have been developing in the thesis although it's not mandatory, sometimes it's difficult to find the uh, specific uh, internship placement for that. And so we have a quite a big list of institutions uh, with which we have uh, agreement already, but it's also up to the student to find another uh, internship placement which may fit uh, uh, your interest. So um, this is to be done during the month of June, July, August. Uh, so then when you finish, you have to submit a report and it's not necessary that you come back to Barcelona anymore. And this is also done because in many cases, students have extended their internship um, in September, October, etc. As well, we, we like to talk about our partners. Uh, we are proud as well to count on uh, important partners in the course, and not only they are providing internships and so on, but we have partners which are um, uh, somehow um, giving input as well uh, in the theoretical courses. Uh, we, are, uh, we have an, an agreement with International Federation Red Cross, uh, as well with UN Habitat and with RMIT University from Australia. Um, all of them are part of our courses and also uh, offer, like UN Habitat for example, they are offering as well internship placements. It's important to say that the first part of the course is accredited by International yeah. Federation of Red Cross, so you get a certificate of mm -hmm. the Shelter and Settlements course. Uh, this is very useful for people that want to go on into working in a humanitarian area and they have the, this certificate of uh, IFRC. Mm -hmm. 
I think that one of the things that makes this program really, really special is the faculty. If you look into our blog and see their background and what they're doing, they're relevant professionals and academics. Um, I think one of the things you earn from this program is a network of marvelous connections with great universities such as Oxford Brooks or um, universities like um, Columbia University in New York or even in Barcelona, excellent um, experts in different topics that are around the program that will then go on to being you know, a network that you'll acquire. So we have a great balance of people that are practitioners on field that are working with NGOs that are in post-conflict situations and post-disaster situations, but at the same time, people that are researching and new topics that are necessary to confront these very, very complex contexts we will be working on. Um, well, our, I think it's, it's important to talk as well of our alumni. Um, all our classes are uh, international group so all the students coming to the master are people from everywhere in the world uh, this is quite uh, nice and as well this is enriching for the dynamic of the course uh, we have alumni that uh, we, we try to keep in contact with our alumni so we have many of them have come to give open lectures or even to teach in the program um, when you finish the program uh, we have a diverse um, variety of, of workplaces. Um, this is something that also if you follow us in Facebook or uh, our blog, you can see insights of what our alumni are doing right now. Uh, some of them are uh, dedicated more to research, but most of them are uh, dedicated to uh, working in um, uh, local authority with local uh, authorities, with uh, private companies, with NGOs, they have even uh, developed their own NGO. Here we have some uh, quotes of uh, our alumni. And another thing that is singular is that you're in a city like Barcelona, so there's a lot of activities and events, and one of the things we think is important of our masters is to disseminate what we do, precisely because they're topics that are very contemporary, that there's very little done in this field or published in this field. We have a great link to the institutions in the city, so we've developed some dialogues or some uh, conferences uh, in Roca Gallery, for example. We've been exhibiting our work of our students in different platforms here in Barcelona. This year in the M3, which is a very emergent um, architecture competition, our students designed um, tents for refugee camps and they were exposed. Um, so we always try to combine a bit of boost of open lectures and trying to link ourselves as being in such an active city like Barcelona, which is also very socially oriented to different things that are going on in the city. Another um, topic that we're very interested in, as I was saying, is in disseminating our work. So we've done publications, and the publications include work thesis and research from students of ours and professors of ours, which are really great. So you can find our publications also online. Uh, this is an opportunity for you to also publish after you finish your work and also um, start getting into the field of, of academia through journals or through books. And then uh, we think it's important as well if you're interested in the program uh, that you go online to our blog. Uh, it is uh, regularly updated with news not only from the master itself, but as well with news uh, related to the content of the program. You can see there what we have done in our field trips or in the internships as well, what are our alumni doing, the professors we have. Um, then you can find us as well in Facebook. Uh, we encourage you to already like our Facebook page. We will be updated with many news. And I think we have an Instagram as well. Mm -hmm. Um, well, this is the website of the university. university, which you will find all the information as well of the admission process. And about the admissions, uh, if you need any information uh, regarding admissions, you have to write to this uh, email address that it's appearing right now. Uh, but basically, it's to send your portfolio, CV, motivation letter, and other uh, legal documents. 
and then mm, you go through the process of admissions and if you have any doubt you can always uh, write to them. I must say that if you're interested you must hurry because we have limited spaces yeah. and, um, and we have a lot of demands so clear your doubts as soon as possible and contact us soon because um, we already have quite a few people in, interested in the program. That's it. Yeah, thank you very much thank for you. your attention and we'd be delighted to answer any questions you have or any doubts. So give us space to see what are the questions that have been generated in the no. chat or give you time to formulate them through the chat and we'll be very happy to answer any questions. Okay, we'll start answering questions. Lucas Zelik, uh, he says, Hi, thanks so much for the information. Is there anywhere I can access the work that was carried out in Ecuador? Yes, Lucas, uh, uh, we're going to make a post on the blog and um, we just got back Monday from Ecuador, so it's very fresh. We're also generating a document that we're going to share with our partners. We always like to give back something to the community we work in. It's never a project that is just going in and out, it's always ongoing. So this is really um, something we look forward to, which is really creating and boosting communities and helping the people that are there with local partners. Juan Carlos Uribe Vega, I am considering pursuing the Mundo Servano program, and I was wondering how does your program connect to and complement the first year of students at Domstadt? Juan Carlos, if you're interested in the Mundo Urbano, um, you have to go through Germany first, and it's, uh, it's something we didn't explain. Our program is a one-year official program in Barcelona. If you do the Mundo Urbano, it's a two-year program, and we're a second-year mobility option. So you would have to do a whole first year in Darmstadt and then pick your mobility between Barcelona, our program, um, Grenoble in France, or Rome, um, to continue your second degree. We, we really have to contact them. It's a, it's a two-year program, which is different. Yeah. The admission process is totally different. It's, Germany. Germany. It's, it's done through the University of Darmstadt in Germany. And you won't be yes. our student till two years from now, actually, well, unless you start. No, now in September, it's, it, yeah. it's already done the admissions. It's already done the admissions for this year. So um, if you really want to do our program, you should sign up now, because or else you'll have to wait two years. Yeah. So any other questions? We'll give some time for anybody that's connected that wants to have more answers. Okay. Hi, thanks for the presentation. May I know? Sorry. Okay. Hi, thanks for uh, Zo Z O is saying hi. Thanks for a succinct presentation. Ah, May I know if the, the nine thousand five hundred seventy fee per semester or for the total length of the course? It's for the total length of the course, and it includes the field trip. It includes the the, um, the tickets, the airfare, and the lodging, and it's for a whole year. Yeah. So also, when it's the application deadline, how many places are offered and what advice do you have to apply successfully? Uh, the application deadline, uh, normally it's, uh, we finished in July, 
um, there are 24 places offered and we already have uh, quite people uh, admitted so it's very few places left and to apply successfully you just should go to the website and check all the documents you have to send uh, and send it to the to root uh, regalon and the her email it's in the application process as well and any doubt you have regarding that you can ask ask her um, Jordi Bayer, uh, thank you very much for all the information. My concern is whether it is mandatory to be an architect in order to study this master's. It is not a must. I'm, what we will do is not teach you architecture. So this is why it is basically, you should know already the basis of design, but you can be from geography, you can be from um, any, any field of the built environment, because what we are is a group of professors that are teaching you to work in a different context. So. It's a field that architects haven't seen in their career, but um, we have had students from different disciplines. Just to make it sure, we're not gonna be teaching you AutoCAD, even though it's a master's in architecture. We're really tailoring to architects that wanna change their methodologies and work in different contexts, mm -hmm. which are post-conflict, post-disaster, urban upgrading, etc. cetera. Now, um, has the application process started yet? Yeah, we have started uh, yes. already. So we are receiving applications already since... Yeah, we usually have this ago. first session now because it's like to remem remind everybody that the application has started. And so it's really important to start now because also to come to Spain, you need to, we have to help you through the process of the visa and there's a lot of requirements. Here. Um, Jack O'Lantern says, hi, thanks for the information. I'm wondering how much on development Hi, thanks for the I'm wondering how much on development you cover in the course. Um, we do cover development. Um, it's like half and half. Many, much of the courses, and the first part of the course are linked to um, emergency and post-conflict. And the second part of the course is more urban development. You do have development theory. In the first weeks, we try to give you a, a boost on development theory. And then it is very linked. I think we've come to a point in the program where we notice that when we're talking about reconstruction, regeneration, upgrading, we're always talking of contexts where development is very relevant because we want whatever we're implementing to be sustainable in time. So it's very transversal. I would say that um, you're seeing development through the course and the topics around development. Okay. What kind of facilities and studios are available on campus? We are, uh, as I said, we are, uh, we belong to the School of Architecture. This program belongs to the School of Architecture. So uh, we have a model lab, for example, um, the library. Uh, we have different studios from the undergraduate. Uh, there are uh, open lectures um, every two weeks. Uh, we have different events happening from the School of Architecture that uh, you can have access uh, as you will be a student of the school as well. So I don't know if you refer to any specific uh, facility. Um, I think that what is very relevant is that this is an intense course. Yeah. You have classes that are morning till from 10 to 5. So there isn't much time to be doing other courses. I don't know if that's where your question is heading towards, but it's a very intense and demanding course. So as Raquel was saying, you can take some language courses if that's your concern. Um, you can be involved in activities of the School of Architecture, but you won't be taking courses in the School of Architecture. Your courses are based in the, in the master's. Um, can you describe pathway to postdoctorate research after the completion of this course? Yes, Z. Um, uh, when you graduate from our master's program, your degree enables you to do a doctorate directly. Um, we are doing research in UIC on the topics that, of the master's, so there are some post-doctorate, post you're saying, or pre-doc, because of course when you finish a master's, you'll be going to a pre-doctorate, that means doing your doctorate studies, and postdoctorate studies, studies is after you've done a doctorate. Either way, we have research lines that could um, incorporate postdoc and pre-doc persons. Mm -hmm. I think we're not missing any questions, right? No. 
So when you complete the course, you will be you can go directly to a doctorate if you present a proposal and you have a professor that can guide your research. If that was a question, you're welcome. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Okay, thanks to all of you too. And if yeah. uh, you have any other further questions, please contact the males that are here. Um, you can talk to Ruz Regalón for any questions of admissions or to either one of us. Uh, our ad, our emails are on the blog and our and website. Website, yeah. And please do like us and follow us if you're interested oh. in the topics of the masters because it's very. We're always putting things that are very relevant. There's no last question. Oh, there's a question from Fatima Rubio. Is the masters more theoretical or more practical? Um, the studios are mixed. You'll have um, camp design, so you'll be designing. You'll have practitioners, so they'll be telling you on the field what they're, what they're um, seeing, both in post-disaster, post-conflict. Um, our field trip is very practical, as you've seen. We've gone and we've worked literally in a um, reconstruction plan in Chamanga. We've also built um, some facilities there, so there's a mix. You will, though, have to have some theoretical classes because we think it's very important that you know about development theory. We think it's very important that you know about environmental justice. There are topics that we, we can't not cover in the course. <laughs> so it's a mix. I think it's very mixed. And if you look at the professors that are teaching, it'll give you a feel of, of where the backgrounds are from. OK, so okay. thanks to everybody. Does anybody have any more questions? Okay, thanks so okay. much to everybody. Thanks so much. And uh, please contact us immediately. And if you're interested, please register and start your application. Thanks. Thank you.